Welcome to the big four secrets of passing the ACCA Advanced Audit and Assurance Examination. My name is Steve Chun and I'm the fail member of ACCA. I'm also the technical writer for ACCA AB Magazine for the IVAS column and I've published four accounting books and two of them are related to IFIs and I'm also the current independent examiner in a university called New Solve and for the financial management module. I've been teaching the ACCA AAA paper uh, previously, it's called the P7 paper for, for, for quite a few years. And I've helped thousands of students pass their AAA examination. And this particular section, I'm gonna share with you my big four secrets of how to pass the AAA examination. As you can see, the chart I created for you the, many students may have failed the AAA paper before, uh, but perhaps some of you haven't studied or haven't begun your ACCA AAA paper. So here are the secrets of helping you with your exam success in the upcoming sitting exam. So first of all, the AAA paper is called Advanced Audit, and that means the previous ACCA F8 or F3 financial accounting knowledge, the F7 or the FR financial reporting, and even the AA audit and assurance for these uh, auditing standards knowledge that you need to know before you come to the AA examination. But perhaps some of you may have got exemption from those papers. Uh, you might have sat the ACCA SBR or strategic business reporting paper or previously, it's called the ACCA P2 Corporate Reporting. And you've studied and covered all those IFIs or International Financial Reporting Standards Knowledge. And this is good news because in the AAA paper, the examiner will heavily uh, test you about the IFIs knowledge. And this is why uh, you need to have a solid foundation on those areas before you proceed with your AAA examination. So, uh, from my perspective though, from my years of experience, I've been teaching the AAA paper. So first of all, the knowledge that you need to have, I uh, use big four to summarize those. So not only you need to have the IFAS knowledge, and in the AAA paper, there will be particularly 36 IFIs, including the IFAS for SMEs, to be tested in the, in the exam. There will be two ethical documents that you need to be aware of and one is called the ACCA Code of Ethics covering five principles and also the IESPA Code uh, which is published by the International Federation of Accountants or the IFAC or is commonly known as the IFAC Code of Ethics and there will be different situations in there and the examiner would try to bring some of the situations and mix them with a question called ethics question in the examination. Not only for that, you also need to know about 47 standards on the standards on auditing, standards on uh, assurance engagement, uh, the practice notes related to the uh, financial instruments, on quality control on related services, and also on the review engagement. And this is particularly important uh, I noticed that many study books or the study tests haven't covered the standards in a very technical manner but use a common sense approach. But to me, uh, this may not work in the AAA paper because I noticed the examiner style when setting up the exam question on the uh, auditing knowledge or the uh, review engagement and so on and so forth. The examiner were directly testing you about the particular aspect of the standard and then based on the standards requirements the examiner derive a scenario based on that particular requirement in the standard. And that means to me my teaching approach here for the big four for the standards knowledge especially for the auditing standards I would go through all those standards one by one and using a very interactive um, very easy to remember approach, which is the uh, the mind mapped approach or the uh, or the or the chart like this, 
and to make sure they understand all those bits and pieces in each of the auditing standards. We'll take a look at those examples later on when we come to it. And finally, what you need to have is the business common sense, which means in this particular paper, you are acting as the audit partner or perhaps the audit manager. So some questions may involve uh, asking about when setting up an audit firm, what would be the considerations uh, that you need to have or you need to consider the, the sort of situations or sort of factors when you're setting up uh, the audit firm. So it's very important in your answer that you need to understand the cost and benefit analysis. So for example, how you're going to place advertisements, how you're going to bid the project, which means uh, in the tendering documents, what sort of things that may be included in there, and so on and so forth. When answering questions, it's always uh, very important for students to have common sense. And of course, in our course, I'll teach you how to do that later on. So many students have failed the ACCA AAA because the average pass rate is around about 30% for the AAA paper. But the AAA paper is very interesting to me and also is quite challenging. But um, the questions set by the examiner on this paper are quite uh, standardised to me uh, because another bit four would be the key questions types that will account for approximately 60 marks in your exam because there will be 100 marks in total in the AAA paper you need to have at least 50 to pass and about 60 marks are related to, for example, the risk question usually there will be 20 marks question asking you about the business risk as well as the audit risk the audit evidence, uh, probably 10 to 15 marks per sitting. So the audit evidence question will involve uh, a scenario asking students to recommend the audit procedures to be performed on each of the item. And the review and report stage account for another 25 marks. The ethics question from 12 marks onwards. Um, as you can see, that seems to me we've already covered those areas. You, if you have sat the ACCA AA or the previously F8 audit and assurance paper, you must have seen all these types of questions very similar to the F8 audit, very similar to the AA paper. But um, to me, uh, according to my experience, because it also marks students' script. Uh, I've seen many weaknesses that the students' answers will have and restricting their abilities to get many marks in the AAA paper. And that's why some students have failed the AAA paper for less than 40 marks and some of them uh, perhaps from 45 to 49. And according to my experience, any students with less than 40 marks would suggest that their knowledge is not solid. For 45 to 49 marks in the AAA paper, that suggests that the exam technique is not good. And that's why I'm going to show you some examples of why students have failed the AAA paper. Here, I provided you with the common weaknesses of the student's answer. So, Let's try to see an example I've taken from the AAA past examination question. The AAA exam uh, would set the question like this. First of all, it would give you the background of the case, and then with multiple requirements in there, in a computer-based environment. And that's why I've structured my course using my own study tests. I've published study tests with the ISBN. Uh, it's called the AAA Education Book. And if you become one of our students, you can have this book as well in the PDF format. And as you can see, all the questions in there, I've structured it using the real computer-based exam environment and to make sure students are familiar with the style of the uh, questions and screen uh, that they will be facing when they come to the actual exam. So first of all, as I always said, We've got the case background here. Let's have a look at it. It is the hotel business. Okay, it damages the environment. Right, it seems to me that could be our client 
illegal activity. It could be punished by the government, perhaps, where the finance director did not follow the auditor, uh, did not allow the auditors to speak to other employees regarding this issue. So it seems that I'm acting as the external auditor and I find out this issue and then the finance director said, you can't tell anybody else. You are the audit manager responsible for the group audit planning. Okay, you are at the planning stage. So that usually uh, carry out before the financial statement event. So let's look at the requirements. Discuss additional implications for planning the group audit. Okay, so you need to explain the impact. At the same time, we, I noticed the magical words in each of the requirements in the AAA paper is called AND, A-N-D explain any relevant actions to be taken by the firm. Okay, you also need to know, or you need to say to the examiner what to do. So the marking scheme, as you can see, the mark allocation is five marks here. And to me, uh, I've observed many students may have already failed the AAA paper because they write too much. So um, for some students, they see the five marks question, perhaps they will provide five points related to it. But to me, five marks, I would deem 1.5 markers per point, and that means I would write approximately three paragraphs uh, for this particular question. Now, let's have a look at uh, the weak answer, okay? Weak answer here. So he says, right, uh, the client's having illegal activity, and then what to do? You need to consider the impact on your audit planning. There will be uh, lots of issues that we can talk about here, but let's see the, um, the weak answer provided by these students. First, he said, we should ignore the final director's request Okay, because the finance director says, you cannot tell anybody else. So it seems to me that's quite sensible. But let's see. Because this is an example of limitation of scope on our audit. Wow. It is a very, very magical way of saying this. Um, that means the, um, it seems to me, according to the standards knowledge in the ISA, so technically it's called the ISA 2110, uh, agreeing the terms of the audit engagement and if there's a, any limitations on scope on our audits that breaches the precondition, preconditions okay, within that audit engagement and from the auditor's point of view we may consider to report this directly to the audit committee of those charged with governance and solve this issue otherwise we may need to re resign our audits uh, or perhaps uh, we will issue the uh, disclaimer of our opinion in our audit report. But to me, the students did not further explain about this, okay, of what to do, whether this is right or this is wrong. But simply giving a term limitation on scope um, ends with the limitation on scope. Uh, so to me, that's a common weakness by many AAA students because they may have not noticed the requirements in the standards, so that they cannot expand their answer. So it says, client's behavior, which means damaging the environment, is illegal, right? Yeah, you uh, pick up the word illegal, and this is fine. And we should take appropriate actions, right? We should take actions, but what actions are you going to take? No way. No explanations here. So, this is a common weakness by many students. Here, if I were the marker, I would only give a maximum of 0.5 marks here. Because uh, for the first half of the answer, yes, you can award, uh, it can be awarded with 0.5 marks. But for the second half, no marks for this, because there will be no direction in your answer. Now, the benefit of using my own book about the AAA examination is that for each and every exam question or the past examination question, I've structured the question using the step one, two, three, and four, and so on and so forth. 
This helps lots of students pass their AA examination. So, in my answer, I will say, right, perhaps I will report this to the audit committee as the exam technique shown in the subheading. But I will take information from the case, for example, highlighted in bold. So, uh, the finance director's request is inappropriate. And that's my comment, because this is wrong, in other words. I've made the comments, taken information from the case, usually no marks for this. But that will be a building block for my further explanation. So, the step two I will take is I will take the requirements from the ISA or the International Standards and Audit Act. I will say that the precondition is that no limitation on scope uh, is allowed. And that means the client should provide all information to the external auditor for auditing purposes. Right, that's the requirement in the ISA. I don't need to specifically quote the ISA 210. Yes, I don't need to do that. But I need to say about the requirements in the ISA. Otherwise, you can't get many marks for this. So, if I were the marker, you will be awarded with 0.5 marks for this. Then, the case information is the limitation on scope and not acceptable. Right, okay, I will say uh, this is the requirement, you're not following it, and this is not acceptable. The further comment on this, okay, another 0.5 marks. And the final recommendation is where the audit partner should raise this issue to the audit committee. Okay, final 0.5 marks. So here's how we get 1.5 marks for this particular paragraph. So in the exam, you don't need to write many points, but you need to follow a very, very structured approach. Otherwise, the AA examination is a disaster. But if you follow the correct approach, and I will assure you, you will find AAA paper very, very interesting. The second example uh, from my students is about the audit procedures. So sometimes students may have already noticed that the examiner's answer for the audit procedures divided into the general procedures and the specific procedures. But for some of the audit evidence or the audit procedures questions that the examiner's answer will only focus on the specific procedures rather than the general procedures. But why? Well, one of the reasons behind it is because that the examiner is testing a particular standard on auditing. So let's see, the standards on auditing 510 is the initial audit engagement where we check the client's opening balances. So uh, there will be a couple of uh, requirements in the ISA 5110 about the initial engagement. And as you can see, in my actual course, I will summarize all those ISA, each and every ISA, in this particular beautiful, gram, uh, be beautiful graph. And according to the ISA requirements, there will be the general responsibility and also the specific procedures. And that means, for example, take an example from the AA examination. Here, the A marks question, the examiner gives you a case, and that's the initial engagement, the first time you perform the audit for this particular client. And then examiner asks you to explain the procedures required by the ISA 510, it's the opening balances related to the inventory. So giving you A marks, well, technically, you need to write approximately three points related to general procedures. So for example, you're gonna see where not the last year's closing balance becomes this year's opening balance, and where not the accounting policies are consistent, or where not the opening balances con uh, contains material misstatements. So you need to confirm all those bits and pieces by reading the past year's financial statements. And if you do this, that will be three marks uh, approximately. Okay, and then you will need to write another five marks, or perhaps four and four, uh, on the specific procedures related to the inventory. If your answer is heavily focusing on 
the specific procedures related to inventory, you will lose the easy marks about three to four in this particular question. And that's why students failed. So, in the AAA paper, yes, the common sense approach is important. But more importantly, this is a professional paper. You need to know the standards. Otherwise, if you haven't got the standards on these areas, you have no idea what to be tested. The final example I can give you is about the IAPN. It's just to be the practice uh, note uh, related to the audit of financial instrument. The examiner sometimes will give you a case and so asking you to explain the audit procedures or the considerations when you are auditing the financial instrument. So it seems that this is quite technical, but indeed it's not. Because in the AAA paper, the examiner will not heavily testing you the IFRS in depth. But you need to know about the IFRS. More importantly, you need to know the requirements in the IAPN. Otherwise, uh, there will be uh, a lot of difficulties that you will face when you seek the AAA paper. And that's why I created the answer style using the big four as well. For example, so the step one, I copy from the case information by control C and control V from my computer. The step two, I will say about the standards requirements by referring back to the ISA, for example, and where not, and to comment on where not this is followed by the clients. So, step three, I will explain the impact, why you should follow, why this should be followed, and step four, I will make recommendations. And you will notice the keyword in each of the exam in the AAA, for example, appraise it, evaluate it, discuss it, and these are the higher level verbs that you will be expecting in the exam. So, how to pass the AAA paper then? So some students may have relied on the past examination questions uh, set by the examiner. And I would say this is a good approach because by studying, by learning the past examination questions, you will be very familiar with the wording of that question and also you can apply your exam technique uh, to any new questions uh, in the exam uh, that would be similar to the past, past ones. But do remember, according to the examining team, we'll make sure that there will be no questions that will be the same uh, that has been previously tested in the AAA paper. And that means you will never expect uh, the same question in the upcoming sitting exam. Perhaps that will be a similar question, uh, but trust me, there will be quite a lot of requirements in the ISA or the International Standards on Audit Tape as well as the IFRS. The exam will pick different areas to be tested. If you simply learn the previous exam settings answer and then paste it to your upcoming sitting exam, that will not work. So that's why do not simply learn the answer, but making sure that throughout your study of the AAA examination and make sure that your standards knowledge is solid. So you can also apply them in your actual uh, working environment as well. So, the uh, idea of passing the AAA paper is all about your uh, writing. Okay? It's all about your writing style. So some students, for, for example, the common weakness, uh, referring, referring back to the first paragraph here, so some students will stop from there. If stop from there, Yes, you ignore the second requirement, or perhaps you're not having the appropriate exam technique, you're not aware of, uh, even if the examiner is not asking you about the actions, but by changing the words evaluate, you still need the action okay, in your answer. And that's why your writing skills are very important. And we will have different approaches for different type of question in my actual AAA book, in my actual AAA course, I'll be teaching you about the AAA examination. So that's why uh, after studying the AAA paper, you will also need to attempt the mock exam uh, provided by me as well. Uh, by practicing the mock exam, 
you will practice the correct structure in each of your paragraph, step one to four, or sometimes I will, all, I will only include two steps, sometimes three steps for different types of questions. Uh, but please do notice that the AAA paper, same as what we've studied in the previous papers, grammar error, no problem for that, you will not be punished by the grammar error. But, you know, when we are sitting the AAA mock exam under, for example, the invigilator or in front of the computer, we will feel pressures on that. So sometimes we'll make those errors and this could be fine. So it's very important that you should practice those questions or the mock exam under exam conditions before you sit the actual AAA examination. And after that, I will also provide you with the personal feedback of how each paragraph, how many marks that you've scored for each and every sentence. And that will be quite valuable advice to you of how to pass the AA examination. So some students may expect, for example, the business risk questions, 10 marks, or the previous questions, I've told you, five marks here, considering the implications on the audit planning. And here, some students may have lack exam technique, they would deem, okay, 10 points are required. And that's why for each point that they've made, each point is not well explained, and this is not acceptable. Here, for example, for 10 marks business, business risk questions, you will only need five points required by the examiner. So that's why when I teach the AAA paper later on, you will see I will detail the marking scheme and by telling you how many points that you need to write and what extent that you need to write. So your answer will fit the examiner's style so you can pass the exam very easily. Trust me, common sense approach doesn't really work in the AAA paper. You need to study the ISA knowledge or other standards knowledge in depth, okay? Otherwise, very difficult to pass. Now, how I can help with your AAA paper? First of all, our course is accomplished by the uh, published study test. It's called the AAA Education Book. I'm the author of this book. And we've structured question in the CBE environment. So you can see uh, the similar uh, questions style in the actual exam. And also we provide our own written answers okay, in my book, uh, taken from the examiner's answer, but we restructure it using the step one, two, three, and four, and to make sure they can follow it. Together with our high quality, uh, HD quality, lectures, uh, like this one, uh, I'm the lecturer for the AAA paper, and our lectures are updated according to the syllabus changes, particularly in the AAA paper, you, you will be also be tested about the current issues, and make sure they're ready for that. And of course, we will update the current issues, and if you see in the uh, examinable documents and the syllabus, uh, the current issues will be different for each and every exam sitting. And that's why we've also got the updated plan for our videos before you purchase our course. Uh, so for example, by the end of which month, we'll update our lectures on which topic. And you will clearly see that all our lectures are updated according to the syllabus changes. Not only for that, very importantly, is the dedicated tutor support we provide it. And you can always WhatsApp me or perhaps email me if you've got any academic questions. You've got the support directly from the founder because I'm the founder of APC. APC is also the gold learning provider uh, accredited by ACCA. And also I'm the lecturer, course director. I'm also the author for the book. You will get direct support from the author. You will get the precise answer for the uh, questions that you're asking. And also I will provide you with the constructive marking feedback and that means when you complete your mock examination and you will see the uh, mock examination for each paragraph, how it could be improved and the detailed feedback of this and that will be quite valuable. Finally, let me show you my education book of what sort of things that we'll be covering. 
So, first of all, we've got a content here. Uh, we've talked about, for example, the review reporting, uh, other assignments, current issues, and also the mnemonics are created in this book. So, for example, I talk about the exam, exam technique. They'll be showing you uh, exam technique for different questions. So, you need to follow the step one to three, describe the matters, you only need to follow the two steps, and so on and so forth. Besides, I will also cover all those I advice that you need to know, for example, the I's number one and so on. I will create the uh, chart, for example, the International Accounting Standards number one, presentation of financial statements into which paragraph, uh, into which section, and then you can apply them directly in your answer. For different and different uh, accounting standards, for example, according to income taxes, uh, from my experience, uh, the corporate income tax and deferred tax, uh, the key requirements that you need to know to be applied in your AAA examination. Right. There will be no unnecessary points okay, uh, in the course. Besides, you also see uh, the style of the standard summary. Okay, just to, let me just to give you. So, for example, when we talk about the fraud and error in the section 3, I've talked about the ISA 240 is our responsibility when we find out fraud. And here, for example, for each and every ISA, I would create this, for example, the definition of the ISA about the fraud, what it has, and there will be different types of fraud, and what fraud uh, that will uh, impact on our audit, for example. So, for example, our responsibilities and the limitations on those, and the pre-assumptions in the ISA, the management responsibilities, uh, why this is a high-risk area has been tested by the examiner here, okay, as a specific requirement. Um, and you see the exam questions later on, after studying the ISA thoroughly uh, for each part in the ISA, you will see exam questions testing different parts each and every exam sitting. That's quite interesting, okay? It's just, just a different way of, teach, uh, of, of testing these standards uh, built into different cases set by the examiner. Although they are looked very similar, but actually, no, okay? This is the professional stage. This is the professional paper. You will never expect the same question in your actual examination. So according to my experience, if you have this graph, okay, for example, this chart, uh, learn them and then apply them to the actual exams and you will uh, have more confidence in passing the AAA, trust me. Right, that's the uh, big four secrets of how to pass the ACCA AAA examination. I hope this helps. Uh, if you're interested in our course, please visit our website. And I look forward to seeing you in my actual AAA course and I wish the very best of luck in your upcoming AAA exam. Bye. APC, accounting for your future.